Good morning, everyone. Virgo here. It is June 20th, 2019, and welcome to Sovereign Citizen History Today. Today, we are going to be taking a look at none other than Mr. Roger Elvig. As you can see here, I've pulled up a really interesting piece of history, and it says, Patriot nut job or a man that history will view one day as the one who saved America. All right, so we're going to be getting into this today with regards to Roger. Roger is one that definitely spearheaded the redemption theory part of the sovereign citizen movement. And so we're going to be talking about those things and some of the cases that uh, Roger was involved in, what his history is and how he played his role in the um, falsities of the sovereign citizen movement and the redemption theory part of it. We're also going to be talking about um, what happened to Roger due to the fact that he decided to become a part of this. And we're going to be watching a few snippets of videos with regards to um, Roger and his teachings because just like all the others, he too gave seminars. Here's a screenshot of Roger Elvick giving one of those very seminars that we're going to be talking about today. But before I do that, for those of you that have not heard about this, uh, let's talk about the redemption movement. The redemption movement is a pseudo-legal conspiracy theory and fraud scheme that can be best described as sovereign citizen quackery meets gold standard quackery. The notion originated in the United States with white supremacist Roger Elvick, and make no mistake, this man was absolutely a white supremacist, who uh, pushed the redemption movement through the 1980s and the early 1990s. The conspiracy holds that the gold standard was not replaced by fiat currency, but instead replaced with a bizarre system in which each citizen, as opposed to a national, who are supposedly the actual people that exist, yes, you heard it right, is actually a legal fiction held as a collateral worth, uh, held as a collateral worth the oddly specific amount of 600, or, $630,000. There we go. Um, this is then somehow used to give money its value. The exact date at which this system was supposedly established varies from crank to crank. Some hold that it occurred uh, when the U.S. government abandoned the gold standard in 1933, but others established this date to have been right around 1913 with the formation of the Federal Reserve. Elvick believed that government deposits exactly $630,000 uh, into a hidden bank account linked to the newborn American and administered by the Jewish cabal. Its promoters claim that um, should the correct magical legal maneuvers and incantations be performed, it is possible to redeem, hence the name of the movement, the $630,000 held in the name of the doppelganger persona and that after filing the correct paperwork at the courthouse declaring oneself a sovereign citizen, of course, uh, one's home loans and other debts can be paid in full by tendering a site draft or bill of exchange or what is now called accepted for value in the name of the U.S. Treasury. As with all pseudo-legal attempting to put any of this into practice, we'll assure that the user will have a very bad time. At the very best, a claimant can be fined for attempting to produce this conspiracy's arguments, for quite frankly wasting the Internal Revenue Service's time. As we know, those fees are about $5,000 per sheet of paper. At worst, however, pushers of the quackery will be convicted of fraud and find themselves in federal prison, as we have seen with many. While it has since largely uh, died in terms of being called the um, redemption theory, since Roger Elvick uh, was convicted of criminal conspiracy and, ooh, shockingly, tax evasion, the basic uh, tenets of the movement lived on to plague the virtuous. 
Since then, it has spawned several similars, similar uh, scams, as you guys know. The government can't control me type of people, and taxation is theft kind of people. Um, the only two groups that gained any traction are the Freeman on the Land movement, which claims that similar birth bonds exist in Canada and the UK and Australia, and the citizenship uh, is just legal fiction, and the, of course, sovereign citizen movement, which ditches any pretense of being about anything that isn't paying taxes. Um, so let's take a look at uh, some more information with regards to Mr. Roger Elvig. What you're looking at here is actually a video that was put up many, many years ago. This was actually something that was um, provided by someone who was taking Roger Elvig's advice and had paid him to draft up several letters in order to um, not only fight someone in court, um, but supposedly, once these paper, papers were actually filed within the court, they'd receive some huge check amount um, as a settlement for, you know, bothering them over a debt that they owed or several debts that they owed. She goes into going over several of these documents that uh, Roger has written, which mean absolutely nothing to the court. They're absolutely ridiculous, but they are hilarious to take a look at. Um, this was uploaded on Daily Motion several years ago, and um, it is from back in 2003, is my understanding. So I will link this uh, to the actual description of this video so that you guys can take a listen to it if you would like to. It is very funny, and you can get a good idea of how Roger would write things out. He was 100% a very charismatic uh, con artist. He never wavered ever throughout his entire life, never admitted to any of his fraudulent dealings, um, just a despicable human being in, in reality. Um, but, you know, we watch that happen all the time with uh, these movements. So. Again, it'll be linked to the description in this video for you guys to watch. There were many, many people that went to prison behind Roger Elvick and his teachings, and this is a court case that I'm going to list in the description of this video so that you can look at. There are actually a number of cases that involve um, Roger Elvick. But uh, as you can see here, it states one of the, app or one of the uh, appellants, Roger Elvick, put together instructional materials consisting of videotapes, audio tapes, and printed material that explain how to implement the redemption scheme. The materials were available for purchase by mail order from another appellant, Ronald Nutt. Appellant Thomas Porter and Juanita Dewey acted as consultants, helping to explain to purchasers how to use the redemption, or how to use, excuse me, the court in North Dakota and Dewey in Minnesota based on their promotion of the redemption scheme and their personal efforts to use it to receive tax refunds. All three North Dakota appellants are currently incarcerated due to these uh, convictions. A conspiracy indictment against Elvick in the Western District of Texas was apparently dismissed because of the North Dakota conviction. Now, um, Roger went to prison more than once. I believe it was a total of three times. He actually died in prison. And um, that is something that uh, I'm going to be going over in a few minutes here. But this is just an example of just one of the cases where there were multiple people involved due to following uh, Roger's actual seminars. And that information here is just condensed and it goes on a schedule and then every week or two or a month, it used to be a month I think at one time and then I think it went out every two weeks I think. But And, and that schedule goes directly to a U.S. Treasury Dispersing Office. And when it gets there, the U.S. Treasury Dispersing Office makes out a check that looks just exactly like your, your Social Security checks or whatever. <clears throat> and we had one of these made out to pay a guy's taxes here on his property here in southern Minnesota. $8,014 <coughs> taxes on his real estate. And they made that check out directly to the, uh, to the county treasurer in his county. 
This is while he was in prison? While he was in prison. All right, and having seen that video clip, I am going to uh, take a, have you guys take a look at the Grand Forks Herald. This uh, was something that was actually put up September 15th of 2011. Um, strange standoff in Lakota continues. Nelson County Sheriff Kelly uh, Jank continues to consult with, quote, my team of experts on how to peacefully end the strange standoff at Lakota, North Dakota farm family facing criminal charges who refuse to leave their farm or talk to Jank. Nelson County Sheriff Kelly Jank continues to consult with my team of experts on how to peacefully end the strange standoff of Lakota, North Dakota farm facing criminal charges who, okay, sorry, I didn't realize they repeated that. Rodney Brossart, his wife, Sue, and their children, Abby, Alex, Jacob, and Thomas, were charged in a confrontation earlier this summer over a neighbor's six, cat over neighbor's six cattle. The Brossarts will not return. The brothers face terrorizing charges for appearing to hold guns while refusing officers' attempts to arrest them. Meanwhile, Roger Elvick, the ex-convict former area farmer who has uh, attracted national attention as a troublemaking anti-government zealot and who is met with the Brozarts left town last week for California. Nine people, including three minor children of Rodney and Sue, live at the Brozart farm South of Lakotas, uh, said Sheriff Jank. They are standing pretty tight at their res are staying pretty tight at their residence. He said they all six have outstanding charges. The situation was sparked by the complaint in June from a neighbor who said Brozart would not return six stray cattle. In the ensuing confrontation, Brozart's sons held guns while declining orders from deputies, and his daughter allegedly hit an officer. Eventually, six adult Brozarts were jailed and posted bond. They have since failed to appear for scheduled court hearings. We have made several attempts to place phone calls through third parties, Jank said. Uh, they are choosing not to return our calls. The Brozarts attend a local Catholic church, church, and Jank has spoken to the priest as well as others who know the family. It's about, a, uh, it's about a lot more than six stray cattle, Jank said. There is a history with Brozart. The cattle are just the last thing we have to deal with. The Brozarts raise corn and soybeans and cattle. Uh, Neil Carlson, a TV reporter with Valley News Live, was, the Brozart, was at the Brozart farm this week trying in vain to interview them as they drove tractors around the farmyard. Carlson reported he saw what looked like a rifle inside the cab of the tractor. The Brozarts have some connection to Elvick, a former Michigan, North Dakota farmer who built a reputation the past two decades as a leader of anti-government efforts. Elvick moved back to the area uh, to that area last year when he got out of federal prison, Jank said, living near his ex-wife in Lakota. But he failed to pay his rent and was evicted say those familiar with the case. When asked by the judge during the hearing to answer the ch to the charges, Elvick simply stood up and said, this court is adjourned and walked out, said one witness, who asked to remain anonymous because of concern about Elvick's reaction. You see, Elvick was a um, white supremacist. He was violent, and he um, made several threats against judges claiming he was going to bomb the uh, North Dakota courts and all kinds of things. So we, this is where this redemption theory that you see people like Harvey Dent and April Lejeune trying to push on you in different formats. So like April talks about the UCC and Harvey talks about ACH and trustee accounts and all this other stuff. And it's all born from this crazy white supremacist guy. None of this is actually real. During the hard times in farming 30 years ago, uh, Elvick lost his North Dakota farm to federal lenders, say those who know him, since he's been bitter and seems to think that the government owes him a lot of money, a feeling he uses to justify not paying his debts at times, they say. According to the Southern Poverty Law Center in Georgia, Elvick was held holding seminars in 30 states on his theory calls that he calls redemption. So there we go with the redemption theory name. Now they call it TDA accounts. And I'm sure there will be something new that pops up rather soon. In the hard-to-follow conspiratorial concept, 
Elvick claims the federal government secretly owes each citizen about $630,000, and he teaches people how to try to get that money. He can be uh, seen on the internet, on YouTube, he teaches people they don't have to pay debts in U.S. currency and can thwart the IRS, according to SPLC. His theories include warnings about Jewish bankers, and he's had ties to the late North Dakota tax protester Gordon Call. According to SPLC, Elvick first started spreading his crackpot visions in the 1980s when he was the national spokesperson for Committee of the States, a white supremacist group Elvick started with William Potter Gale. Some of you might recognize that name. That is actually one of the parties we will be discussing in Sovereign Citizen History next week. Who had previously founded the Posse Comitatus, a violent anti-Semitic organization. Five years ago, Elvick was convicted on federal fraud and extortion charges in Ohio and served several years in prison. Sheriff Jank uh, said, since Elvick returned to his area last year, he has held meetings attended by Brozick family members in the third, par uh, third party's home. Elvick and his ex-wife left last week for California, but expect to return to Lakota later this fall, Jenks said. Uh, like many around Lakota, Jank has heard and seen enough to worry the Brozerts might resort to violence, he said. That's why he is taking a careful approach to the case, including consulting with larger law enforcement agencies. We are meeting with what I call my team of experts, people who are used to dealing with this type of situation, and we are continuing to meet on a periodic basis on numerous occasions, Jenks said. My intent is to end this peacefully. I want to reach out to the Brozards to start a dialogue and ask them to give me a call to let me know what they are thinking. How many of you guys actually remember this happening back in 2011? This was national news. It was a standoff um, that these people uh, had going on with law enforcement, and it involved these six cattle. Roger Elvick was involved in this, and this is one of the smaller things that he was actually involved in. All right, we have the Roger Elvick Google group that is actually still up and functioning where people can take a look at it. It's been going on since the early 2000s. There's a lot of information on it. I'll be linking that to the description of this video. It talks about the white supremacist and anti-government extremist Roger Elvick that was arrested in Minnesota on September 3rd of 2003. This was his second arrest, I believe, after being uh, indicted in Ohio on multiple charges related to bogus check scheme called redemption. Um, let's see. Now, as far as Roger being jailed, he um, was jailed, I believe, a total of three times. Um, you know, Roger was just a con artist and a con man. He, he honestly... Um, was a complete and total criminal. One of the times that he was jailed had to do with making threats against a judge in a North Dakota, Dakota court. Uh, Roger served many, many, many years of his life in prison. But while he was in prison, one of his favorite things to do was to actually go through the prison system, libraries, uh, legal libraries, and give seminars right there at the actual prison to other prisoners, uh, especially black prisoners, because he was a white supremacist, and he believed that if you give um, people that he saw as subhuman or sub with sub-intellect, uh, the um, information and the redemption theory, that they would take it, use it, and they would then end up uh, back in prison, and perhaps he would be able to gather more of their family members and friends in prison also. Really ugly, ugly situation. Roger is someone you definitely need to look into if you're following the Sovereign Citizen History series, which you also can, by the way, locate my previous ones in the playlist on the Virgo Triad uh, intro page of my YouTube channel. Um, if you are trying to learn about where these wacky things, when you see these videos on the Van Balen channel, for example, on Degeneration Nation, on, uh, uh, oh, many other, many other quality channels, Scam Stingers, a lot of other channels that show you the, you know, crazy sovereign citizen right to travel stuff and a lot of the redemption theory scams that you see on these channels have to do with 
this man. If you are really trying to dig in and figure out what is it that these people are talking about, where did they get their information, this series that I'm doing right now, the Sovereign Citizen History uh, series, is something you want to watch because this I'm giving you background of the people that spearheaded these movements and what their different um, takes on these movements were and how people today continue to recycle these scams and sprinkle and dabble these people's lies onto their own format so that they can use this scam to um, steal money from people. All right, y'all, I hope that this helps you to understand Roger Elvick a little bit better. One of the things that you are going to find in the description of this video that is actually really important are the links to all of Roger Elvick's um, se seminars from 1994 and I believe 1995. And if you are able to sit for five hours on and off and watch these videos, I've tried to piece them apart for you, uh, it will give you every piece of information that you need to know about the redemption scam. All right, everybody, have a great day. Bye-bye.